This little jerk ate out this entire cabbage. And it just looks like a disco nightmare. But I'm going to pull him out so you can see how small he is compared to how much damage he did. So That's him. That little guy destroyed this whole cabbage. That tiny little thing. Jerk. I was wrong. He had four friends. There were three friends. I was wrong. He had three friends. There were four of them. June bug. Jerk. Now I have to find them. Bastards. I just found these all on one plant. They're ski. Egg one. Egg two. Egg three. Egg four. Egg five. There, you can just see the yolk. Well, here's a failed experiment. Um, I tried sprouting some, like, brassica root crops uh, <laughs> in coffee grounds in a tray. And uh, instead, I just got mold and some sprouts. Uh, good germination rate, but the mold, not awesome. So I'm just gonna probably throw this in like the weird crappy open air compost that we have because I don't know that I want to introduce this mold to my compost compost. But yeah, that's a bunch of seed that is just ruined. And a dog. But mostly a bunch of seed that is now just gone. Um... Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'll throw it in the chicken bed and uh, see if they survive. I don't know. I'm going to try something later, but uh, I haven't had coffee yet, so my brain does not work thoroughly enough to solve this problem. But uh, yeah, you can see there's just like a whole swath where none of them germinated, but the corners did well. Um, yeah. For germination, this worked okay, but for actually getting a plant, <laughs> garbage. So I opted for tea this morning instead of coffee um, to try and not wake up Jens because the coffee grinder is very, very loud. And we had um, new house blend from Bird and Blend that was just sent as a like, oh, you ordered here, try this one that you didn't order. Um, so we'll see if it's good. Uh, they're a British company. I really like them. Uh, every quarter they do a like charity tea and so like a specific type of tea is on sale that they choose a charity and the charity chooses the tea that they want and all the proceeds from that, all the profits go to that charity. So um, yeah, they're a good company. I like them and they have very very good tea. Uh, but that was not what I was going to talk about. I was going to talk about these guys. Uh, these are three of the eggs that we set in the incubator two weeks ago that um, they're sinking. They've been in an incubator at 37.5, which is about 100 degrees Fahrenheit, um, for the last two weeks, and they are sinking. Uh, they clearly were not viable. They were dead. Uh, three of them sank. Three of them floated, those three I put in the compost last night, and three are still in the incubator and will hopefully hatch out next week. Um, but I'm going to see if these are still edible. And if they are, they're going to be breakfast. So I'm just proving to you <laughs> that they're sinkers. But they were in an incubator for two weeks, so uh, that hurts my brain. Uh, but also really annoying because we paid extra for hatching eggs and we got a 33% uh, <laughs> viability rating. So that's really annoying. Um, yeah, 
I'm not impressed with that, but that's okay. Um, we got them from a random farm down the street and we'll see. Uh, but hopefully we'll get three chicks and hopefully those three chicks aren't three roosters, which they very well could be three roosters. Um, but yeah, so I'm just gonna crack these open and see what happens. Okay, well those are definitely not eggs and not like half chickens. Um, cause there was a possibility that this would be like a baby bird that didn't make it, but it definitely is not a baby bird that didn't make it for everyone's uh, sanity clarity. There might be like the beginnings there, but yeah, that's just, that's an egg. Um, yeah. Uh, doesn't smell like anything. It's just an egg. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna just fry these and put them on toast. And, uh, if I have food poisoning or die, I'll, the next facial scans <laughs> reporting on YouTube that, uh, I made a terrible mistake. Not the prettiest eggs, but they are definitely eggs. Um, I'm just frying them in butter and canola oil with salt and pepper, and uh, maybe if I get fancy, I'll go grab some chives from the garden to finish them off. But, um, yeah. These eggs are way bigger than the ones that we get from the Selkies, which is why we wanted to hatch some eggs. Uh, they're from Swedish uh, flower hens, or Svens Um and... Yeah, they're big, beautiful birds, and we are hatching them for my uh, bonus barn, my stepson's birthday next Thursday. Uh, but yeah, so there's only three of them. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Ugh. I normally wouldn't cook my eggs this long and leave my yolks more runny, but uh, they were in the incubator for two weeks, and that seems like not a good food safety plan. <laughs> so uh, these are probably well done eggs with some chives from the garden on uh, just toast with some mayonnaise, <laughs> making like an open-faced fried egg sandwich because <laughs> these are absolutely enormous compared to what I'm used to because I have silky bantam birds and their eggs are much, 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 much smaller. Um, yeah. Oh, we're going to have too many eggs. I don't know that we don't already have too many eggs, but hopefully at least one of those chickens is a hen. And then um, all my roosters are silkies, so we might end up with like weird Swedish flower hen silky babies in the future, which could potentially be hilarious um, or terrible and wrong, but also hilarious. So other than being slightly overcooked, those eggs are totally good to eat <laughs> and I don't know how to feel about that. They should be mostly chickens by now and in not like not edible eggs that were in an incubator for two weeks that we picked up on the side of a road like yeah but um they're good they're tasty they're a little rubbery because I overcooked them because I was paranoid about dying but they're good and there's a cat Um, so far so good. Maybe in an hour I will be vomiting, but <laughs> so far so good. This all needs to be redone and reorganized, and that's all coming out! And I'm reorganizing the greenhouse because that is what I need to do today. Wow! Nemesis! Nemesis! There's so many white cabbage moths, and their babies are so hard to find in the greenhouse. They are ridiculous, and they are murdering all of my brassicas.
progress. But I found a frog in the greenhouse that I think is living with my chives. So let's see if I can find him again. Because he is trying to escape me. But he was hiding in the corner just a minute ago. But yeah, we have a frog. Which is good. When you have frogs in the garden, that means you have a good, healthy ecosystem. But um, he's hiding from me now. If I find him, I will put his cute little butt on camera. Okay. Well, that's kind of done. Um, I used the hydroponic water that had a bunch of liquid fertilizer in it to water everything in the greenhouse. Today, uh, I dumped a bunch into this, which is like a three-year-old grape plant. So that, you know, and there's this where my volunteer uh, eggplants came from. Um, ooh, chaos! So much stuff, but it makes it feel so much bigger in here when there's not a weird hydroponic thing. Um, I don't know if this is a mistake moving my ginger into the shade, but I think it'll do better in the shade in the hot. The one that I had over here that was in partial shade was growing better than the ones that were up top and drying out. Um, I've got peppers going. They can take the heat so they can go up there. Uh, my starts that need to get transplanted. Um, but yeah, I can like actually get into this corner now which is cool. And maybe we will find our frog friend, but also he may have like ran away forever and is terrified of me because he is a frog. Um, yeah. And I found, um, a bunch of volunteer beets coming up in some of these. So I transplanted the rest of my beet transplants into the other buckets. So nemesis! sorry, there's just another cabbage white. Um, but yeah, so this feels way better and more organized and on purpose. Um, I pulled everything out of this bucket except for that one broccoli and I just pulled seven caterpillars off that one broccoli. So that is a mistake. Uh, there were two nasturtiums, two cucumbers, and my volunteer pumpkin in here and some broccoli. Uh, this is the only broccoli that still survived and it was the only plant that was still going to produce food for me. Um, and I have nasturtium everywhere in my garden and they were much healthier, happier plants elsewhere. So I just pulled these out. Um, I'm still trying to hope this broccoli will get it together and survive and make me some actual broccoli. Um, but you can see how much the soil level has gone down over the course of the season, how much food came out of there. Um, so I'm going to top this with some more of, uh, my plant or my compost mixed with topsoil and then I'm gonna put some transplants out for my fall garden. I don't know what I'm gonna put in here with this one broccoli yet. Um, I'm super hesitant to plant more brassicas because of those jerks but I think 90% of my fall garden is brassicas so you know uh, we'll figure it out. Um, yeah hi it is like 89 degrees today and oh god I should check and see what the temperature on the bee says in the greenhouse because there's not zero chance I'm just delirious well I don't believe it's 120 degrees but that's what it says <sighs> yeah I'm gonna go drink all the water now all right here at the frog I don't see him but I heard him well, now we are on a mission to find Mr. Froggy. There he is. Hello, Mr. Frog. <laughs> Where are you going, Mr. Frog? Frog! In the greenhouse. You were so lost. Okay, this is absolutely out of control. Uh, this is the hugel bed that we put in, uh, planted the same as the no dig with a couple of exceptions on accident. Um, no dig got off to a great start. It is petering out much faster earlier and having weird, uh, problems. Whereas the hugel is just kicking its butt. It's awesome. Well, those are just some ripe tomatoes with a bunch of spiders in the middle of this forest. Ugh, I need to prune. I don't know that this is better, but I tied up my plum tomatoes and oh god. It's just 
just. Well, I guess like the sun can get in there now, but uh, yeah, suckers have run amok uh, in the middle of this. So it's just insane. And that's just like a wall. It's just a wall of tomatoes. Hey. So last year's carrot box, which has these chines and that rosemary and these beans and a violet plant. There's one wood sorrel that I left in the back. Um, I'm going to plant some winter salad, some merlot salad, uh, chicory, some dill, a uh, plocket, romaine, and a uh, baby leaf mix. So all those are going to just get sprinkled through here, mixed up, not going to worry about it. So this is going to be our winter salad box. It's just a normal uh, 80 by 120 pallet collar. So, yeah, it's not a lot of space, but we grew a ridiculous amount of salad in the back uh, this summer in not as good of an area. It was very hot, very sunny, um, but it grew really, really well in this very small space. And we planted like four entire seed packets, which was like 2,000 plants. And um, we ate off of that for like four months, and it was like maybe $5 worth of seeds. So, yeah, a bag of salad here is like $5. So <laughs> that was uh, very, very, very worth it. So I'm hoping to get these started today and we will see what happens. So I just got a little vertical planter. I think it's maybe six inches deep. Um, that's going to go right there on Facebook Marketplace for 15 bucks. Woo! Uh, yeah, so I'm going to plant some seeds in it and um, do some of my transplants from up here. Uh, whichever ones are not completely decimated by caterpillars, which is uh, not many of them. Ooh.